Hey guys, Dave and Len here. We just played Crisis 2000 from Game Fix Magazine, issue number 2, November of 1994, so this is pretty old. This game's a tragedy, and the reason I say that, I actually got angry when playing it, is the concept behind the game is fantastic, and if they would have done more playtesting and maybe had a third party playtest it and offer some uh, advice and balance the game better. It could have been a 10 out of 10. This could have been one of the best, it, this could have been the best area control war game uh, that was ever in like a magazine or, or maybe even in a box. Uh, but the combat results tables are so screwed. Well, the data combat results table is pretty good. The armed combat combat results table is just god awful. Essentially, you got a insurgency here in the United States. And the government's fighting the insurgents, and there's two types of uh, combat. You got data combat, which is like uh, propaganda and cyber warfare and that type of stuff, and then you have armed con conflict. Some units are uh, have uh, better data conflict, some ha have better armed conflict, and some don't have a data capability at all. And there's some units that can only be uh, destroyed by either another data conflict unit or or like a police unit, I forget the names of these uh, units, and there's also event shits that you draw, uh, some of them an actual event occurs, other ones uh, it just adds to your data attack or your uh, uh, armed attack, but the problem with those is they're, they're, the, the definitions are what these things do is written in the rule book, so you're passing the rule book back and forth, I wish it had a player aid for each player that explains what what these counters do? I understand this should have this should have been in a perfect world done with done with cards, but in, in a inexpensive magazine game, you can't uh, you know it's not financially feasible to have cards and stuff. So, but they could have had a player aid for each player. But let, let's go back to the combat results table. So you got two types of con combat: data combat and arm combat, and the. Now, the data combat results table, you can like do things like neutralize an enemy unit, or you can have one flip over and, and uh, join your side, or, or you can have a recruit result. So if, if you roll a recruit result, then you can recruit uh, uh, forces for you from the recruit pool. And as far as armed conflict, the thing that was wrong with it is, here's an example. You can have 10 units, let, let's say, with a, a total armed conflict, conflict value of 30 or something, attacking one unit with an armed conflict value of, let's say, 5. Yeah. And if you roll a 1, 2, or 3, it becomes a counterattack result, so the other guy uh, fights back instantly then, and at a 5, if he happens to roll a 10, he will literally destroy all 10 of your units and his will survive. So the, the combat results table is just, like, completely random. Uh, if you don't roll well in this game, you're going to lose, period. It doesn't matter if you have the strategic abilities of, like, Alexander the Great, you're going to lose if you don't roll well. So in that case, it's kind of like uh, some of these ancient games out there, the modern ones. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the game was fun to play, though, and like I said, the concept was interesting. Uh, I, I just thought if they would have playtested and more balanced it and got, did something about that armed conflict uh, table... Uh, uh, rework that. It would have been, the game would have been a 10 out of 10. What do you think of the game, Len? Yeah, a lot of things. First of all, actually, this is playable. This is not a, yeah, it is a big disaster that um, other games we played. But uh, we're talking about ways of making it better. Because one of the things that um, I agree mostly with the arm combat is a big problem because I, I found out that I just move my combat units in and I can cause all sorts of trouble. Like for instance, he has two combat units and I move in one, uh, it's, it means nothing, just more targets he, to eliminate. Yeah, and the combat results table only takes into account the attacking uh, forces attacking numbers. There, there's not like uh, an odds ratio, so it doesn't yeah. matter what the defender's uh, numbers are yeah. there. And uh, that's what I uh, was doing for a while. I was kicking uh, Dave's forces, but I ran out of people after a while and they could barely hold on. Uh, uh, it has some good points, and I was thinking uh, I would like a game where you can build your armed forces instead of uh, you get like... Um, a Build recruit them. result. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Instead of, uh, like at the beginning of each turn, instead of getting the crisis uh, markers, 
uh, getting recruit points would have been a lot better. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking, and you could have like the rebel forces, the uh, cyber warfare units are half the price than it is for the other guys, but the other guys, the armor units are half the price. So, you know, one side is encouraged to use more like combat units, while the other one would have the cyber units, because we found the cyber units yeah. could actually be kind of powerful when you get a lot yeah, of Yeah, oh, the cyber units are great. Uh, this game, it, it, it has some replayability because at the beginning of the game you roll on a table to see what government forces there are and what rebel forces there are. So depending on what you roll, two games yeah. will be uh, not even close to alike. Like this, uh, I think I had rolled a six or something on it. And the government had like uh, was like a sledgehammer. It had some powerful uh, attack units. However, he had these great data units. And as we found in this game, uh, uh, having good data units overall is better than having uh, good assault units. Yeah. So as long as I had a few of them and... I was going good, mm -hmm. but once I started losing a few, and such you started losing a lot of units. I wish that we had build points. I could build up my forces and garrison more areas, because I needed to have a unit and an area to keep mm -hmm. on getting. It, so, uh, actually, it it isn't that bad. I mean, I could put ninety four. Well, you know, uh, it's over twenty five years. They can always. Uh, we write the rules, right? Because actually, the map and the counters are there, are just yeah. good enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with like probably uh, not that much rework, they could turn this into a ten out of ten. Uh, just yeah. change a few things around, and yeah. like I said, have a third party look at it uh, who will give you your honest opinion. Oh, if any of you ever have play testers, let me explain the kind of play testers you want to get. You want to get play testers who are. <laughs> Meaning, seriously, you want the guy who people say, oh, th this guy has no filter. That's the person you want play tests in your game because if something's wrong with it, he has no qualms about telling you that the game sucks and he'll tell you why it sucks. That's the kind of person you want. What you do not want are, are these pe yes men uh, play testing your games. You want to play test your games. If you want your game to be a good game, find some to play test it. Seriously. But. Overall, I'd give this a 5 out of 10. Uh, as far as recommending it, well, you could probably pick this up for 5, 10 bucks, so it's worth 10 bucks. Uh, and, would you recommend? Yeah, I was about to say, this is a better bargain than most games. And, you know, we're griping about a few things. I mean, I could easily just say, well, rewrite the on combat tables, and there you go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and uh, build, allow to build armies, and there you go. Yeah. I mean, it's not much, uh, you don't need to change much in this game. Mm. So, even though we're griping about it, it isn't that bad. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll have a new game for you next week. Not sure what you'll have to decide. Have a good evening.